So regarding our discussion of this thing called an access control list, let me give you a quick example of an access control list. An access control list, the first part of it is a list. So for example, we have a first item on our list, and a second item on our list, like a grocery list. You're going to the store, you're going to buy some stuff. You have a list of things that you want to get. Now, what exactly is it a list of? Well, in Cisco, an access control list is a list of permit statements or deny statements as part of this list. So for example, maybe here at line number one, we're saying we want to permit some specific type of traffic to be routed across our network. And then maybe we want a different set of traffic in line number two to be permitted. And then for line three, we want to deny some specific traffic. And then maybe we want to permit other traffic. And then line five in our access control list, let's permit yet even other traffic. And to refine this list a little bit regarding what we want to permit and deny, let's imagine that we are trying to control traffic that is being sent by this computer over the network. So this computer is at 10.10.0.50. And up here we have a web server at 23.1.2.100. So one of the many options regarding using an access control list is to actually control the traffic to permit or deny certain types of traffic as it's being forwarded through the network. But as we'll see in just a moment, that is not the only function or use of an access control list. So for this example, though, let's imagine we do want to control what traffic is allowed or not allowed through the network. So let's focus our attention right here on R3. So the routing that's currently set up for traffic from the PC going to the server is going over here to R2 and down here to R3. And R3 is forwarding it up here to R4 and R4 is doing the final delivery. And that's based on how we currently have OSPF set up in our network. So if we choose to use an access control list to control what traffic is allowed or not allowed through the network, for example, we could say for line number one in our access control list, we could say we want to permit all traffic from 10, 10, 0, 50 if it's going anywhere. So I'll go ahead and just use the keyword any here to represent that we're permitting traffic from that specific host going anywhere. Now an access control list, one of its options is to be applied to an individual interface. So let's imagine for this access control list that we're now creating on our whiteboard here, let's go ahead and also apply it on this interface right here and we'll apply it outbound. So think of an access control list that's applied on an interface, think of it like a bouncer at the door. So any packets that are being routed by this router that are trying to leave or go out the door, the bouncer is going down the list and it starts at line number one and sees if it's a match and goes to line number two. And when it finds a match, it then takes the action to permit or deny that traffic. And so here, let's call this the ACL access control list or bouncer, the individual who's controlling the access at that door. And let's also say that we train the bouncer to look at all the packets that are going out. So if this client here sends a ping request that tries to go to the server, the bouncer would look at this first line and say, okay, I'm instructed to permit traffic from this IP address 10.10.0.50, that's your source address, going anywhere regarding any destination address, I will allow you to pass. And boom, that traffic is allowed to be forwarded. Let's do another example. So let's also imagine we have another computer here that's at 10.10.0.51, and we also want to permit its traffic if it needs to go out this interface on R3. So we can make another entry in the access control list. It says permit traffic from the host at 10.10.0.51. And then instead of saying any, we could say, you know what? Permit that traffic if it's going to 23.1.2.100. So as traffic is trying to leave or be routed out this interface of gig 00, the bouncer who has that access control list goes through the list and says, okay, the traffic is from 10.10.0.51. The first entry in the access control list doesn't match, so looks at line number two, permit host 10.10.0.51, going to that specific IP address. That does match. The bouncer says, great, I'm going to go ahead and forward you, and it doesn't need to process the access control list anymore for that individual packet. But it's going to do it again when the next packet comes along. So for the next example, let's imagine we have, instead of a 10.20 network with a 24-bit mask, let's imagine we have a 10.20 network with a 19-bit mask. And let's also imagine on this access control list that's applied outbound on this interface on R3 that we want to deny any ICMP traffic that is sourced from the 10.20 slash 19 address space if that traffic is, let's say, going anywhere. So we could put a specific IP address, but in this case, let's say deny traffic if it's ICMP traffic from this source address going anywhere. So if this happens to match the traffic being sourced by PC20 as it goes through the network, Router 3, as that traffic tries to leave this interface, gig 0, 0, it'll say, okay, does it match line number 1? No, it doesn't, says the bouncer. Does it match line number 2? No, it doesn't. Does it match line number 3? If the answer is yes there, it says, oh, the action is deny. And basically, the access control list is going to drop that traffic and prevent it from being forwarded out this interface on the router. So by default, the router is super happy without any access control list to forward anybody's traffic to anywhere it knows how to reach via its routing table. And the access control list is now further refining what's allowed or what's not allowed. 
And let me give you a couple other examples here. Let's also imagine that traffic trying to leave this interface gig 00 where the access list is applied outbound. Let's imagine we want to permit TCP traffic if that TCP traffic is from a specific source subnet. And then I'm going to specify the destination. So we could put in either a subnet or a specific host as the destination. And then furthermore, we could also say it has to be destined to the port, for example, TCP port 443 as the destination address, which is the well-known port for HTTPS. Or if we want to permit the traffic specifically for just HTTP, the destination TCP port would be 80. So in our access control list, we can also identify that. So that way, when this router has traffic that's being forwarded out this gig 00 interface that was at layer 4 TCP from the source identified here going to the destination IP address specified in line number 4 and it was going to TCP port number 80 the router with its access control list would be checking each line and say, does it match line number one? Nope. Does it match line number two? Nope. Does it match line number three? Nope. Does it match line number four? It would say, yes, it does. It matches that. And that would go ahead and allow the router to forward that traffic because of the permit here. So the router is going to process the access control list from top to bottom until it finds a match, and then it's going to execute, for example, either permit the traffic or deny the traffic when we have an access control list that's applied to a specific interface. And let's do one more permit in our five-line access control list, and let's imagine we want to permit a DNS request with the plain Jane flavor of DNS. So that would be UDP traffic, and we could say we want that allowed from any source IP address going to any destination address if the destination port is port number 53, which is the well-known port for DNS requests. And that way, if we have some device on the network that's trying to make a DNS request, as that traffic is going through R3 and being forwarded out gig 00, if the ACL is applied outbound on that interface, the router is going to go ahead and check the access control list, first with line 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. And if it finds a match here for that UDB traffic at line 5, and the action is permit, the ACL permits that flow of traffic to be routed out of the interface. So next, let's take a look at the negative side. What happens if this access control list is applied to this interface, gig 00, outbound? What happens if there's traffic that shows up and needs to be forwarded out, but it doesn't match any of the existing entries in the access control list? And to answer the question regarding what happens, let's imagine we have a bouncer that has a list of invited guests or invited traffic that it's willing to allow to go through that door. What happens if somebody who's not on the list shows up? And the answer in the real world is the bouncer is going to say, sorry, you're not on the list. And that's exactly what happens with an access control list that's applied to an interface. If traffic shows up that needs to be forwarded out that interface and that traffic is not matched in any of the entries in the access control list, there is an implied action and that is deny or not allow that traffic. And that traffic will be dropped. So any of the routed traffic trying to go out gig 00, if it didn't match any of these permit statements like here, 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 or here, it would automatically be denied because of the implicit deny at the very end of an access control list. And I also have some slightly good news and that's this. Let's imagine that we have an access control list, but we forgot to supply any entries in the access control list. So think of an access control list with no entries in it at all whatsoever, and it's applied to an interface. The good news is that the router says, well, it's an access control list. It's applied, but there's no entries in it. So I'm just going to ignore it and just let all the traffic go through. So an access control list with no entries in it is not going to block any type of traffic. So let me clean this up a little bit more and let's chat a little bit more about access control lists. So I'll go ahead and put ACLs for short to represent access control lists. Now, an access control list can be used for much, much more than just for filtering and permitting or denying certain traffic as trying to enter or exit an interface on a router. But that is certainly one application, and that is we can use them for filtering. So by default, the router is willing to forward any traffic in or out based on its routing table. However, once we create and apply access control lists and apply them to interfaces, and we apply them either inbound or outbound, checking traffic as it's trying to go into the router or trying to leave an interface on the router, at that point, once we have an access control list applied, we can control that flow of traffic based on the contents of the access control list. So that's one major application of an access control list is the filtering of routed traffic as it's trying to go into or out of an interface on a router. However, that is only one of several options we can use with an access control list. Another option would be this. Let's imagine we have network address translation or some flavor of it like port address translation. And let's imagine we want to do network address translation for clients on the 10.10.0 network and the 10.20.0 network and the 10.30 network. However, we do not want to do network address translation for other subnets. Maybe we have some subnets with printers or other devices that we don't need to access the internet. So how do we control network address translation to only be willing to do NAT 
for certain subnets? And the answer is we're going to use an access control list, but this time to identify who can be translated. So I'm going to put here address translation. So here would be the logic for that. Let's imagine we're using R4 as the device doing address translation for our network. So here on R4 that's doing the NAT for us, we could create an access control that says, based on the entries in the access control list, I want to match on subnet 10 and traffic coming from subnet 20 and traffic coming from subnet 30. And of course we do the full syntax to identify those, but that's the logical concept behind using an access control list as part of our NAT configuration. And then on the router, we say something like IP NAT inside source list. We'd point to the access control list that we just created and then specify how we want to do the translation, either to an egress interface or to the pool. So in the context of an access control list, I just want to point out that that's yet another purpose and use of an access control list above and beyond just using an access control list to filter what traffic can be routed through the network. And let's talk about yet another option and use for an access control list. Another option for an access control list would be used with quality of service. So here's an example of how we could use an access control list to help us implement quality of service. We could use an access control list to look for certain characteristics of traffic. For example, if we know that our telephony, our telephone traffic, our voice over IP traffic has certain characteristics, we can look for those and match on those inside of an access control list. And as a result, associate a different policy for how we want to forward that traffic. And that way we can have the router by matching on ACLs, give priority treatment to some traffic and then give ordinary forwarding preference to other traffic that doesn't match the ACLs. Or if we have some traffic on our network that we want to intentionally slow down, we can use ACLs to match on that type of traffic. And then based on that match, we can assign a policy giving that type or that class of traffic a very small amount of bandwidth. So that's another example of how we could use access control list in identifying traffic and use it in conjunction with another service. In this example, quality of service. And let's go ahead and list one more, and that would be for routing protocols. And here's an example of how we could leverage an ACL as part of a routing protocol. Let's imagine that we have all these routers running the same exact routing protocol, except on R2, when it learns about a specific network or a specific prefix, like for example, 10.10.0.0 with a slash 24-bit mask, when it learns that specific route, we want to go ahead and give it an artificially high cost or a artificially higher metric, or we want to not inject that route in the routing table. Once again, we're going to be leveraging access control list to identify the individual subnets or prefixes or networks that we want to give special treatment to. And as part of the routing protocol with the ACL identifying the specific network, we can then modify the treatment regarding that network. And in the world of dynamic routing protocols, including BGP, which is used on the internet, that's a very common occurrence to go ahead and identify certain routes and then give those routes special or modified treatment based on identifying those. So part of that configuration is going to include ACLs to identify those specific networks. So I felt it would be important to identify that access control lists, although they can be used for filtering routed traffic from being allowed to be forwarded through the network on an individual interface on a router, I also wanted to impress upon your mind that ACLs are not just used for that function only. They can also be used as part of address translation to identify who may be translated as part of quality of service and also as part of routing protocols to manipulate a specific route or a set of routes that are identified via an access control list. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.